Okay, so good morning, everyone. Um, today we're going to accomplish something very simple. We're going to build a bow tie diagram for a scenario that we can all understand. And in doing so, you'll learn how bow tie diagrams can be an effective way to understand and manage your risk. My name is David Jameson. I'm the founder of Salus Technical, who have built Bowtie Master. I use bow tie diagrams almost every day, and I feel strongly that if used correctly, they're an incredibly valuable tool to have in your toolbox. I know that you'll get a lot out of what we've got in store, so please ask any questions into the Q&A uh, or into the chat, and I'll pick these up at the end. So here's a run through uh, of our day today. We're going to um, dive straight in and build a bow tie diagram, and then I'm going to take you through um, how metadata uh, can be used to further enhance uh, bow ties and how you can manage your uh, risk by looking at um, various consequences and indeed how then to get um, started with Bowtie Master to understand and manage your risk. So if we were face to face right now, I would ask everyone what they thought process safety was and would likely get a wide range of answers and no wonder because here's some definitions of process safety that I've taken from some oil and gas and petrochemical and other energy companies websites and you'll see that all of them have got a very different and quite lengthy definition of process safety and I'd wager that if you were to ask these people in a lift what process safety was that very few if any of them would be able to correctly recite their own company's definition. So you might ask yourself, is this uh, too much? I'd say almost certainly, and indeed it can be simplified. The process safety is not the absence of incidents, it's the presence of effective barriers. Major incidents by definition are rare, and just because we haven't seen one for a while, although it's a very good thing, might give us a false sense of security that everything is okay. So ensuring that our barriers are healthy, and in good working order is key to effective process safety. So here's the um, now very uh, popular way of visualising a major accident event on a Swiss cheese model, and you may have seen this before. The slices of cheese obviously represent the barriers that we've got in place to either prevent an incident from happening, in this case it's a gas, re a gas release, or minimising the consequence if it does. And those barriers may be physical pieces of equipment, what we call plant, it might be processes or procedures, or it might be the actions that are taken by people. And the holes in the cheese, of course, represent the failure mechanisms of each barrier. And if these holes line up, we can have an incident. But unfortunately, many large incidents that have occurred over the years have got one thing that they all share in common, and that's that it didn't just take one barrier to fail. It was the result of multiple barrier failures. We all have a role in making sure that our barriers perform as they should and when they are, re they are required. So let's build a bow tie diagram. Um, let's visit a brand new visitor attraction that's just opened called Dinosaur Park. And please note that this has no way been inspired by the Jurassic Park books or films. So the new attraction is a T-Rex. And hopefully you can see this image uh, OK, and it's been open for a few weeks and it's hugely popular amongst most of the, the visitors, certainly. So the park management have asked us to prepare our risk assessment. And you might be having a look around right now and um, you can maybe see some hazards. You might even see some barriers. You know, we've got a perimeter wall, park entrance gate. We've got a command centre watching over the park. In the bottom corner, you might not be able to read them, but there's lots of manuals, training records, insurances. We've got a park full of visitors in the top left. It looks like we've got an emergency response team ready to go and plenty of emergency exits. But also there's a few suspicious characters uh, lurking outside. So for those uh, on the call who are familiar with risk management, um, perhaps you're already thinking of some hazards and some uh, consequences, and some barriers. You know, so our hazard, of course, is our angry T-Rex, you know, that could get out of the cage. And of course, that could result in the you know, injury or death of the visitors to the park or indeed the park's staff and indeed that might damage the park's reputation. I don't know about you, but I certainly wouldn't want to visit uh, um, Dinosaur Park if there was dinos on the loose. 
But of course, there's lots and lots of things in place in this picture that can prevent those incidents from happening or indeed minimise the consequences if they do. You know, the T-Rex is in a pretty um, uh, strong looking cage. We've got procedures. Let's have a wee look. So we've got our park staff that are, of course, trained, you know, to lock the cage. We've got a pretty robust looking cage there. Right in the bottom, we've got, a, you might be able to read them, but we've got a, a cage locking procedure. Um, we've got, you know, park ranger training and competence records as well. That's a pretty big lock on the cage as well. Um, there's a park alarm that can be pressed, a big red button. We've got emergency exits. Uh, we've got, as I've said, we've got our uh, park emergency response team who are good to go. And indeed, for some of the lesser consequences about park reputation, we've got a park media representative there. And finally, we've got our park insurance certificate. So if you were to take all that and risk assess it, you might end up with something that looks a lot like this. What we see here is, the, is our tip, typical risk assessment in tabular form. We've got our hazard, our causes, consequences and our barriers there. And what we see here is a long list of safeguards and quite often in a risk assessment, and I've made this mistake myself, is we see a long list of safeguards and then make the assumption that that's enough and that we're OK to move on to the next hazard. But as I've said before, major accidents are usually the result of multiple failures. Um, and this can be very difficult to visualise in a risk assessment in tabular form. And when you look at a risk assessment in tabular form, there's often a focus on the causes and consequences. And then, as I say, that simple listing of barriers. And this is where bow tie diagrams come in. They can be used to provide a clear graphical output of a risk assessment in a format that can be understood by everyone, personnel at all levels in an organisation. And it allows us to focus on the barriers. So let's look at the same scenario again, but through the lens of bow tie diagrams. So we'll start by introducing some of the elements that make up our bow tie diagram. The first is the hazard. And the hazard is something, be it an activity, an operation or a material that has the potential to cause harm. When we describe hazards, we should include enough context to describe a hazard in its controlled state, or situation and its size. So here, our hazard is an angry T-Rex locked in a cage. And describing it in this way gives us enough information to assess our risk. Simply saying dinosaur or animal, that would be too generic. It doesn't tell us what it's doing or where it is. So a term that might be new to everyone is the top event. The top event is the point at which control of the hazard is lost. It's now realised its potential to cause harm, but it's not caused any physical harm yet. And it should describe what control is lost. So again here, the T-Rex escapes from the cage. And this is one of the crucial points of the exercise of building a bow tie diagram to get right. The top event shouldn't be a consequence and it shouldn't be too narrow such that it's, it's only got one consequence or indeed too wide bearing that there are dozens upon dozens of consequence. But it's, and, but it, and, and, and it's possible for the same hazard to have multiple top events. And quite often in a bow tie workshop, you might revisit this point and tweak the top event. Um, and that's something that's uh, uh, that's very common. So should our, ang our angry T-Rex escape, what would the consequences be? Well, the consequences, of course, are the harm or the damage that could result from the top event. And it's common, of course, for a top event to have many consequences. Normally, we only focus on the major consequences, but lesser may be selected. Each organisation may well have some, go some governance around the type of consequences that go into bow ties. And much like the hazard and the top event, it's important to provide context. Injury, damage, leak, these don't cut it for me. These don't provide enough context. And indeed, the converse is true. We can be far too specific and end up splitting the same consequence into two or three. For example, if you're eaten on or stepped on by a T-Rex, does it really make a difference? So, of course, yeah, let's just choose two consequences that the T-Rex stands or eats on um, eats people and the event damages the park reputation. But indeed, if we were building the full bow tie for this, we might decide to break the consequences up to park guests or park personnel, as an example, as they may well have different barriers. So we've covered 
our um, top event, the point at which control of the hazard is lost, and we've looked at some of the consequences. So the next element that we bring in is threats. These are the, all the potential reasons why we might lose control of the hazard, reasons why the top event might occur. Identifying all potential threats is a hugely important step. And this is normally carried out as a brainstorming exercise or might even be taken before the bow tie uh, workshop from a hazard, for example. And again, much like the consequences, it's incredibly important to give sufficient context. Via the descriptions in the bow tie, anyone reading should be able to understand how a threat could lead to the top event and then lead to a consequence. Threats can be the cause of a failure, they can be an external influence, they could be operational issues, anything that can credibly cause the top event to happen. So let's have a look at the threats that I've chosen here. Of course, there's the cage might be left open in, in error. The cage might not be strong enough or indeed the cage being deliberately opened by some of those suspicious characters. And you'll see here that the top and the bottom threat both result in the cage door being open, but the reason for that cage door being open are very different and may well have different barriers, as we might see. So here we have our instant, um, sorry, our uh, risk assessment, sorry, shown in the traditional bow tie format. The threats on the left may trigger the top event and the consequences on the right are the undesirable outcomes of the top event. This is a bow tie diagram in its simplest form. Any threat might trigger the top event, which may then result in any one or more of the consequences. This journey is called the main pathway. So we can now extract the real value from bow tie diagrams. We can analyze the risk and we can insert barriers along each pathway. Let's head back to Dino Park and think again about the barriers. And hopefully you can see some of them here and we described some of them earlier. So instead of listing, listing them, sorry, in a table, let's insert them along uh, in, in, the, in the right place on the main pathway. So before we uh, do so, let's just talk a little bit about what we mean by barriers in the context of bow tie diagrams. So barriers, of course, are the measures that we take to either uh, prevent or mitigate the unwanted threats and consequences. Um, a barrier that only comes into effect after the top event, i.e. on the right hand side of the bow tie, might be known as a recovery or a mitigative barrier. And a barrier on the left hand side of the top event are normally called preventative or proactive um, barriers. And again, just like every element in the bow tie, it's incredibly important to describe barriers in the correct context. They must be described pro uh, properly. Barriers should be independent. And what that means that each barrier alone should be able to block or substantially minimise the impact of any event. The most common mistake with bow tie diagrams is not describing barriers correctly and often taking the same barrier and describing it in several parts uh, and th therefore taking credit for the same barrier three times. Um, each barrier on its own should be effective, independent and auditable. You, you, you should be able to determine its effectiveness. Barriers can be many uh, different types. It could be passive, like a like a bund or a wall. They could be active, like a detector or an, or an alarm. They might be hardware, software, or an action taken by people. And they may involve the use of a procedure. And it's common for individual companies to have their own terminology here about barriers. So let's go back to what I said about that common mistake. Um, so it might be common to assume that a procedure is a barrier, for example. Um, a procedure is a piece of paper. For me, it only meets the definition of a barrier, i.e. it's effective, independent and auditable if it's in the hands of a trained and competent person. An active barrier should detect an incident, decide what to do and then act. So, for example, would you say that a sprinkler system is a single barrier? It requires a smoke detector to pick up traces of smoke, then the computer system to then decide to activate the sprinklers. This is one barrier. This is not three separate barriers. If the smoke detector failed, then the sprinklers wouldn't be activated. So let's explore some of the barriers from our example, and I'll and I'll deliberately make some of these mistakes and see if you can spot them. So of course, let's look at our first threat: the cage left open in error. So you know we've got a lock on the uh, cage, and indeed there's a procedure that says you know how the park 
Rangers, um, sorry, I've got that the wrong way around. There's a procedure to lock the um, cage, and of course, there's the park ranger competency record. So we can say that that equipment is operated by uh, competent personnel who are following a dedicated procedure. So you can ask yourself as we go along, is that three barriers or is that one barrier? How do we ensure that the cage is strong enough? Well, you know, um, we've got a cage that's designed to whatever the appropriate standards are um, for uh, keeping a T-Rex safely locked up. What about the cage being deliberately opened? Well, we've got our uh, park entrance and surrounding wall that stops bad actors from entering the site. There's a, there's a park security manual and there's a command centre that's overlooking uh, everything with CCTV. So well, let's say that any one of these threats um, managed to trigger the top event by these barriers failing, what would then happen? So after the T-Rex has escaped, how do we prevent it from uh, eating or standing on people? Well, of course, there's emergency exits that people can get out. There's the park emergency response team that are ready to go. And we've got that command centre that can raise the alarm. And what about the park's reputation? Well, of course, we've got the media spokesperson that can manage the media, the crisis management, and of course, the uh, park carries insurance. So there we have it. You can see for each possible pathway, we've got the barriers visualised, associated, sorry, with the correct threat and consequence, not simply written in just one uh, long list, and they're not confused with the barriers for another threat or consequence. So I'm sure that you'll all ag agree that that's a far more effective way than visualising a major accident scenario than the table. Um, but that's nowhere near the end of the journey with the value that bow tie diagrams can add. Let's go back again to Dinosaur Park. So we know that barriers are not 100% reliable. They can fail and history has shown us that they do fail. Process safety is not the absence of incident, it's the presence of effective barriers. So have a look again at this image and you might see that there's some barriers that have failed or look like they can fail. Um, so I've selected just a few here. Um, first of all, you can see that one of the emergency exits is blocked. People would have to stop and move the objects out of the way before they could get to safety. Or worse, they might not be able to escape at all. The cage door doesn't look in the best shape. There's visible corrosion on the door. And if that were to get any worse, there could well be an integrity uh, problem. There's no use in a state-of-the-art command centre if the staff are fast asleep. You might see that in the bottom corner. And keep it in, in the command centre, there appears to be faults with some of the equipment. So these are just four factors that could degrade our barriers. How can we visualise this so it's clear for everyone to see? Well, bowtie diagrams can be used to capture all of the conditions that can reduce the effectiveness of barriers. And these are called degradation factors, or indeed sometimes called escalation factors. So let's jump back to look at those two barriers that we've just analysed. Let's choose um, um, let's choose the emergency exit being blocked and the cage door being weakened by corrosion. So a degradation factor does not cause the event to happen directly, but what it can do is it can result in the failure of a barrier. Um, so let's have a look at how this works on the bow tie. So again, we can see here that we've got our uh, degradation factor that corrosion could weaken the cage and that could cause a weakening or an impairment of this barrier here. And indeed, the emergency exit being blocked, which could impair the effectiveness of the emergency exits. So we can go even further as well. There's degradation barriers that are sometimes referred to as controls. You can see those here. So for the emergency exit, you know, the degradation factor is emergency exit is blocked, but we can prevent this from happening in a number of ways. We can make sure that all park staff understand the house rules about where to store the equipment. We have to make sure that these rules are enforced. And we can also ensure that regular inspections are carried out. And if a blocked exit is spotted, this is rectified and then reported. And indeed, with the corroded cage door, um, we can uh, we can routinely inspect the cage and then take the necessary remedial action. What's remarkable is that in practice, in operation, we find that these activities are actually what we spend most of our time doing. Uh, you know, that's what most of our operation and maintenance teams and inspection teams do. And 
because without them, our barriers might not be able to function when they are required. Now, we've of course just used a lighthearted example um, to present a very serious topic. Remember that just because we haven't seen an incident for a while doesn't mean that there isn't one just around the corner. The only way to ensure that incidents do not occur is to have barriers in place and have these barriers in good health. Bowtie diagrams are an excellent way of visualising our barriers and the role that they perform. And the use of degradation factors, degradation factors, excuse me, as I've just shown, allows us to see what can make a barrier fail and where we should focus our attention. But there's even more value that we can take from bow tie diagrams. Now we move on to meta data. So how do we know if a barrier is effective? How do we know who's responsible for um, keeping it that way? How do we know what type of barrier a uh, barrier is? Let's have a look at some of our barriers uh, again. Um, barrier, we've got here barrier condition and barrier type visualized as metadata. This is additional information that's available to someone looking at a bow tie diagram. And I can see here the barrier type of each one, and I can see uh, if, if, if it's effective or if it's not effective. Let's take a step out and let's choose barrier condition because we've been speaking about that throughout this webinar. And let's just visualize only that. So let's look at the same bow tie again, but zoomed out. And what I've done here is green means a barrier is effective. Amber means that it's partially impaired and red means that it's fully impaired. Um, you can see that there's several pathways. I've got multiple barriers on them. So that's multiple barriers on the same pathway that are impaired. And this is an incredibly powerful way to visualize a major accident scenario. And again, it's not something that's easy to do or even possible to do in a tabular risk assessment. I can quite clearly he here see the whole scenario in one image. And in this case, I've chosen barrier condition. I can see barrier can I can see the health of each barrier visualized in, in one simple image. And I know right now where I need to prioritize my attention. As I say, this, this is an incredibly powerful benefit of bow tie diagrams. But what about understanding the, the risk? Um, how do you know how bad a consequence would be? How do you know how effective your barriers have been at reducing that consequence? So love them or loathe them, risk matrices absolutely have a place in bow tie diagrams and indeed the wider management of major accidents. Um, what, you, what you can do uh, is you can visualise your bow tie diagram uh, consequences with initial and residual risk. And that allows you to see it again where you should be prioritising your efforts it's accepted practice that the highest residual risk consequences should be at the top of a bow tie diagram as those are where your efforts should be, as is the same with threats. Uh, the most common threats to occur should likely be at the top. And what this does is this, is this allows you to put that bow tie diagram in context that you're able to clearly see the pathways that lead to the highest risk consequences. And here, this is a snapshot of bow tie Master, you're able to see your initial and your residual risk plotted um, for each um, consequence. Bowtie diagrams have got so many other amazing uses, such as workforce engagement, communication of risk, assessment of cumulative risk. The list goes on and on. So we've spoken a lot about the power of bowtie diagrams, and we've built Bowtie Master to make it as easy as possible to build bow tie diagrams to understand, manage and communicate your risk. You can quickly build bow tie diagrams with drag and drop or with keyboard shortcuts. You can import risk assessments via Excel. You can connect to other software such as Power BI for visualizing your risk on process safety dashboard, dash, dashboards. It's in the cloud, so it can be accessed from anywhere. And you can collaborate with other users uh, to build, um, to and build bow tie diagrams. You can you can customize for your organization the terminology. You can put in your own risk matrices that can be used. If you're a consultant uh, that works for several different organizations, 
you can customize each bow tie diagram to suit the needs of the specific operation that you're uh, that you're working on. Some of the other features here uh, that I've spoken before that are, again we think are incredibly important. It's so easy to visualize your risk. It's, it's accessed in the web browser. It can be viewed in full screen mode. And indeed, we understand that communication is a key part of uh, sharing the value of Bowtie diagrams. So with Bowtie Master, you're able to share it. Um, sorry, you're able to download an image. You're able to share your screen, of course. Each Bowtie can have a live link activated that can be sent to someone or can be embedded into a SharePoint or onto a dashboard. And if any change is made to the Bowtie, as soon as someone refreshes that link, they'll get the most up-to-date process safety information. And of course, you can import and export via Excel. We understand that process safety shouldn't be siloed. It should be people working together. So you can add multiple users who can work together to build bow tie diagrams. Of course, there's no cap on the number of bow tie diagrams that you can uh, build. Being able to access from the cloud is incredibly important as well. Whether you're on site in the office, working from home, offshore, you should be able, you know, to access bow tie diagrams to manage process safety. We understand that, you know, uh, having your data in the uh, cloud uh, might not be something that you might immediately want to do. But you know, we're, we're Cyber Essentials Plus certified, so you can rest assured that your data is in safe hands. And the last point is about that customization. We understand that in different industries, different global locations, um, there's different terminology that might be used. I've used threats and consequences, but indeed, um, and, and I've also used preventative and mitigative barriers, but indeed there's other terminology um, that can be used. Metadata, you might want to make your own. So all bowtie diagram terminology and all metadata um, can be fully customised. Um, So if you'd like to get started with either Bowtie Master or indeed um, implement anything that you've learned from this webinar, um, what I, I would encourage you to do is visit the website bowtiemaster.com where you can um, schedule a demo or indeed you can sign up for a free 14-day trial for Bowtie Master if you've got a um, business email address. There's lots of tutorials to help you get started. We've got lots of documentation on the website. Any company that signs up for Bowtie Master right now can um, get limited access to have a free one hour training session where we can either take you through the theory and the basics behind Bowtie diagrams or indeed a deeper dive into how the software works. So it's a fantastic way to get your team uh, started. If you've got bow ties that have been built in other uh, software, we can look to transfer those across to Bowtie masters that you can immediately get uh, get uh, going and of course for our customers or indeed for anyone who's considering bowtie master you can schedule a demo with me or our product manager and we can take you through bowtie master all its features and how you can best um, get value from the software so please visit bowtiemaster.com for more information so as I say, that's the, there's the two links there. You can get that all via our website. Uh, but yeah, you can sign up for a free trial right now, or indeed uh, you can book a demo and we'd be happy to take you through uh, anything. Um, there's so much potential with bow tie diagrams if they're used correctly. And no matter what industry that you work in, if there's risk and if there's value in communicating that risk, if there's value in, de in determining how effective your barriers are, then there's value in using bow tie diagrams. So thank you very much um, for uh, for listening. We're a bit ahead of time. So what I'll do is if anyone does have questions, if you can put them into the Q&A and we'll gladly answer them. And um, so just take, a, just take a minute or so to um, um, do that. And I'll take a look at some of the questions that we've Got in. So while there's some questions uh, coming into the Q&A, you know, there's been some that are sent to me um, directly. And what people are asking, um, the first question is, how do we make sure that we've got the, the threats, the top event and the consequences uh, all in the right place? What I'd say is that's a huge part and a huge difficulty of building bow tie diagrams. And, and quite often when we do bow tie workshops, we might 
begin with a top event um, that's described, and we're quite happy. But as we go, we start to find that actually where that top event's been described probably isn't the right place. So the top event is the point at which you've lost control of the hazard, but it's not had any actual real world consequences yet. So for example, if you had an object at height and you drop that object, um, it's not um, caused any uh, damage or impact yet, uh, but, you're, but you're no longer in control. Um, so I'd, I'd say it's a crucial part of, the, of a bow tie um, workshop is to make sure that the, the top event is correct, but don't be afraid once you've got going um, to revisit the top event and adjust accordingly. Have a look. Um, in terms of how many consequences to uh, like have, I, th I think there's rules, um, much as there is for you know making a slide pack for a presentation, there's a point at which a bow tie probably becomes too much and there's too much information to digest. So if a bow tie diagram is there to make sure that it's easy to visualize, understand and communicate risk, once you have more than say half a dozen threats or half a dozen consequences, it might be time to either split it up into two bow ties or it might be again time to revisit your top event and think have I actually framed this in the right way because if a bow tie, um, if a bow tie diagram uh, gets too big for me it starts to lose, it starts to lose its value. Um, we just got a, another question come through. Is there ways to input commentaries within fields for clarification? Absolutely. There's lots of different ways of um, doing that. And if I bring my bow tie master window across, um, you know, if I double click on a barrier here, there's um, lots of ways. And one such way might be that you can add in the barrier um, description. So indeed, you can have your unlimited metadata that you can turn on and off, but you can add additional information into your barrier description here. And again, you've got quite a long character limit on there. And that allows you to put additional information that will help clarify a barrier, but it's not it's not visible on the bow tie. And that might be document numbers, it might be drawn numbers, that type of thing, or additional info. And indeed, if you want to hyperlink, you can hyperlink to any um, web-enabled hyperlink, like a SharePoint ad address or anything like that. You know, um, so I hope that helps answer your question, um, Anthony. Um, just while some other uh, questions come through, again, maybe a point to say on metadata. Um, it's important to under it's important with metadata that you add what's valuable for you for your organisation. Uh, with Bowtie Master, we have. Preloaded some some Energy Institute recommended uh, you know uh, barrier descriptions from their barrier management governance, but you can add whatever you like. And I would say that don't feel that every single piece of metadata needs to be populated exactly as per governance like that. You should um, have your own standard that's right for your organisation, um, and you should only show what you need to like do. So maybe you only need um, barrier health, maybe you'll need barrier location, maybe you just need barrier owner, but I'd say that's, you know, that that's for your that's for your organization um, to um, set that up. Um, and just maybe a point to see on metadata again is that, you know, I think that color coding is another neat way of visualizing um, metadata so it can jump out at you. Um, and indeed, don't forget that, that in Bowtie Master, certainly there's also um, analyze mode as well. Multi diagrams are an, are an incredibly effective way to help you visualize your risk and um, communicate your risk and indeed with some of the features and software such as Bowtie Master to manage your risk. And I would recommend that you visit bowtiemaster.com. There's some, some fantastic bowtie diagram resources there and um, you can sign up for a free trial or indeed book a demonstration with Bowtie Master. Um, and we'd love to uh, hear from you how, how you can use bowtie diagrams to help in your organization. Um, so please, uh, so please get in touch um, with us uh, now. Yeah, and, and that's the information there. But of course, you can visit uh, bowtiemaster.com. Uh, so what I'll do, a final slide, just say thank you very much. You can contact our email address, support at bowtiemaster.com if you've got any questions. Um, and otherwise, have a great day and we'll end the webinar there. Thank you very much.